Hey everyone, welcome to part three. So in the previous videos, we finally set up the front end uh, through which we were able to get uh, the messages that were posted onto the DB and we were also able to post the messages. But still, we were not able to do these things real time, which was basically the main flavor that attracted you all to this workshop in the first place. So in this uh, video, we will try and inculcate that real-time flavor in our applications. So let's get started. So uh, let's just go to VS Code. And this is all the code that we had. Uh, before we do anything else, we need to uh, install uh, sockets, uh, which will help us uh, in adding the real-time flavor to our applications, both to our front end and our back end. So right now we are on Dev Workshop public directory. So what I'm going to do now is just going to CD into client. So all I'm going to do is say npm install dash dash save socket dot io dash client dash client. Make sure you're inside the client folder when you're doing so. And let's just quickly install socket.io dash client. Awesome. Just going to clear out the terminal. Uh, now uh, we want to import open socket from socket.io dash client, and that's that. And inside our state, we are going to initialize uh, a field called socket with the value of open socket. And open socket is a function that takes in a URL and that it basically means that we're opening up a web socket to that particular URL. So in our case, we want to open a socket to our server, which is up and running at local host colon 8080 and that's pretty much it now what I want to do is go to I'm just going to collapse the client folder and inside our server folder we can close these files as well uh, the two files that we will be playing with a lot are server.js and chat page page.js. So I'm just going to open up server.js real quick. Uh, I'm also going to open up a new terminal window and it opens up at dev workshop public. I'm now going to cd into server this time around and inside server we want to install a package and save it as well called socket.io and this is the server version of WebSockets that we want to use uh, in our server code. So inside our server code we are just going to say first of all require that module so const socket is equal to require socket.io that's that and now we're just going to scroll down real quick and in here right where you have the am.listen code what i'm going to do is i'm just going to assign a variable to this so i'm going to say let server be equal to this nothing much just assigning a variable but now the reason why we have assigned it to a variable is because we want to open up a socket, right? So I'm just going to assign another variable called let IO be equal to socket. 
and I'm going to open up the socket on this server itself. Now there is a function that IO provides us and it is called IO.on. It takes in an event and that event can be of type connection. So on connection, we want to fire a callback function. And this callback function can also take in a property called data. We will use it eventually. And for now we can just say console.log and we can just say made connection. And that's really pretty much it. Uh, all right, so let's do one thing. Let's make sure that you're inside the server folder and let's run node space server.js. So to make sure that everything is actually up and running. Okay, there is an error. Address is already in use. Oh, that means that uh, my server was already running at some, yeah, it was running in some other window. Let me just close this down uh, and let me run it again. So node space server.js. Awesome, we are listening on port 8080 and we have connected to the DB and we have also made a connection. And that is because our chat page has opened up a socket with localhost 8080. So if you work to Chrome, uh, let me quickly refresh this. Uh, okay, that takes care of all the errors for now. And that's awesome because that is exactly what we needed. All right. So if we go back to code now, uh, we can see that we have made a connection. That's awesome. That means both the client and the server are connected through WebSockets at this point of time. Uh, that's nice. Let me just delete this terminal window so that we don't get confused. We can delete this as well. And we can delete this as well. All right. So now that we have made connection, what WebSockets allow us to do is that they allow us to emit certain kind of events when certain kind of actions take place. So if an action takes place, we want to emit a certain kind of event. An example of this could be when a user, any user, for example, there are like 10 clients and when any one of those clients, even when, when any one of those clients or at least one of those clients sends a message. We want, that's an action. Sending a message is an action. When it gets saved into the DB, we might want to emit an event saying that a message was posted to all the other clients so that they can pull in data. So the way we can do that in code is by saying, if you look at our handle submit function inside chatpage.js, so when we are getting back this res JSON, this means that the message was successfully posted and we get back a copy of the message, right? So now what we can do is we can just say this dot state dot socket dot emit and we can emit an event and we can literally name it anything. I'm just going to call it new message. So we're going to emit an event with the name of new message. And we are going to pass in some data. And in this case, the data is going to be the message itself. And let me just remove this particular line right here. And now I'm just going to go to server.js. And inside here, I'm going to say instead of saying console.log made connection, I'm going to say console.log data. But before that, actually this gives us back a socket and not data. Uh, and 
what I want to do is socket dot on new message from so from whichever socket we're getting a new message event back what I want to do is they, it also gives back us some data to play around with and this is a callback function so once we get a new message what we want to do with the data is we can just for now just log out the data itself and let me just go to my server window let me just close the db up real quick and let me boot it up again because i had made some changes let me go back to my browser and let me quickly refresh the page okay uh, we don't have any made connection logs now so let us try to send a message so let's say that we are Alice and let's say our message is hey there and let's press send uh, now if you go back to VS code if everything worked correctly which it did we can see the message object itself and this message object is right here so now what we can do is we can say socket you can actually say io dot sockets and it's sockets so all these sockets that are connected to that io we can emit an event called new message and this is basically the server emitting an event to the client and in this case it was the client emitting an event to the server so let's go back to server.js and once we get the message new message from the client the server is now going to emit a message called new message to all the sockets connected to the IO and it is going to pass in that message data as well so now if we go back to we can we have removed the log statement if we go back to chat page in the constructor itself uh, what we can do is we can listen for certain events so inside the constructor what we can do is this dot state dot socket on and we can define the message that we are listening for so we are listening for this particular message on this particular message we want a particular thing to happen with the data that we are getting back or in this case I would rather say the message that we are getting back what I'm just going to say is I'm going to define a variable called current messages and I'm going to give it the value of this dot state dot messages so the current messages would be the uh, current messages in the state what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do current messages dot push I'm just going to push the new message in that we are getting in from the socket itself and then I'm just going to say this dot set state which again takes in an object I'm going to change messages to current messages and that's pretty much it let me save this let me save server.js and let me reboot server.js and we are connected to the DB let me go back to the client let me refresh the page and now if I type in Zubin and if I type in hey there and if I press send then we immediately see the message right over here now the beauty of this can be seen once I open up two browser windows let me open up another browser window and let me open up localhost 3000 again and now if there was another user say Alice and if she posted hi then you can see that both 
these windows get populated at the same time and I can just say I'm there and if you see both these window, windows get populated at the same time so that's it guys we have added the real-time element I will be posting the code up to github uh, there will be a separate front-end version and a separate back-end version Make sure to check it out, make sure to rewind and pause the video for explanation uh, wherever required. Uh, the workshop on Thursday will be focusing on uh, clearing any kind of doubts. We will also be deploying our apps uh, on Heroku so that uh, this local host thing is not a restricted constraint and we can actually like use this app uh, with real people.